Good afternoon you wee bastards and welcome to the second iteration of War Thunder's update 1.79 dev server. This dev server gave us a look at the new protection analysis system coming to the game and that's exactly what we're going to go over today. So with more and more tanks being added to War Thunder with complex armor compositions, Gaijin has given us a new way to visualize the penetrating possibility of shells versus the armor of these vehicles. Here we have the Leopard 2A4, which of course has composite armor all over, and using the new system, it'll be much easier to work out which shells will penetrate reliably and where. First, let's go into X-ray view. This is how you'd previously see the compositions of armor below the steel outer plating, and as you can see, that is still possible, but what we don't see in this interface is the effective armor thickness. We see the layout of plates and materials in the armor only. Armor view is great for displaying the effective thickness of more simple plating like the rolled homogeneous armor on World War II vehicles, but with the effective thickness of composite armor being displayed in the x-ray view, things could get a little confusing, especially when trying to work out the angled thickness, raw thickness, and effectiveness versus kinetic or chemical munitions. Add to that the fact that War Thunder has in place a multiplier for these listed stats depending on the material used in its composition, and you get some pretty hard to follow numbers. According to stats listed in game, the Chieftain Mark III's 120mm sable shell should not be capable of penetrating the upper front plate of the IS-6, but it does, time and time again. This also happens with various other shells and with depleted uranium shells in the game and multi-core projectiles a future possibility, the old way of visualizing armor just won't cut it anymore. With the new system, which you access by clicking on the protection analysis tab underneath the armor view rather than x-ray, you can select any tank of surrounding tiers and a shell that the tank uses and visualize easily whether or not the shell will penetrate the armor in a style similar to the penetration indicator of arcade tank paddles. This takes into account shell type and uses the angle of the camera as the angle at which the shell strikes the target while there is a range selector over in the menu to the left. This means that exact numbers for the effectiveness of the armor do not have to be given to us while it still allows us an easy method of deciding where to shoot. This could make it more likely for Gaijin to get away with fudging the armor values of classified vehicles, but it will be easier for them to model as well as making it much simpler for us to see what we can expect from battles. Of course, we'll have to wait for the patches release to make sure this is entirely reliable, but I'm sure any bugs or issues will be ironed out quickly. The system will surely take some getting used to, but will certainly be helpful heading forward. It's a welcome change that will make top tier a little more user friendly and could allow for some interesting additions in the future. Feel free to leave your own thoughts on the system in the comments, I'm anxious to hear them, but I'm sure the reception will be mostly positive regarding this change. Anyway lads, that is it for this video, I hope you have enjoyed and that it's helped you out. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy, as there will be new content out on my channel every single day. Come follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, Discord and all the rest, links below, and as always, I shall see you lads next video. This is the final main battle tank France have developed before building the Epic Leclerc for AMX 56. After the failure of the AMX 32, which was revealed in 1982 and intended for an export only role, the GIAP company, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, once again attempted to build a modern MBT for the same purpose. The AMX 40 was developed in 1983 and unlike its predecessors, it featured a larger 120mm smoothbore cannon while retaining a 20mm secondary. It houses an 1100 horsepower engine and weighed in at just 